metal voice, as Toby likes to call it, the metal voices. Today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The metal voice is talking to the metal voice today. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, okay, no, that, that was your spot. You're going to yes, introduce yes. me. <laughs> Tobias Sadik. Yeah, ahead, ecstatic to have the one and only Tobias Samus Samet with us here today. Being a huge Avantasia fan, this is for me personally a great honor to have you here with us. It's it's seen you lots of times live, but man, it's great to be able to speak to you today about the new album. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. It's I great to be say here. The ninth studio album, A Paranormal Evening with the Moonflower Society. It couldn't be any longer, the title, Alan. No, I tried, was... I tried, but you know, especially in the streaming, day and age of streaming, it's pretty difficult to get the title on those thumbnail uh, stamp sized covers online. So, uh, no, it was in fact, it was really funny because the record company, when I first uh, told them what the album was going to be called, mm -hmm. um, they went like, uh, are you sure it's 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 a bit long, isn't it? I said, well, do you think so? I'm I'm not sure. But the funny thing is, they said, okay, it's going to be a challenge marketing and promotion wise. But we love the title so much that we would we would be up for the challenge. And when you hear something like that from a record company that is programmed to make money and stick to rules and not be creative, but be with formulas and <laughs> try to sell stuff the way they have always sold stuff. When those people say it's it's worth a challenge, then it either means that they have given up hope completely, or it means that you have a pretty good title, despite it being a bit too long. Yeah. Speaking of the album, here, I just got it in from Nuclear Bass yesterday. Oh, cool. Uh, is that, is that the I'm going to open it up, and you can walk us through this special edition. Toby. This is an unboxing. This is an unboxing live. live with you well, right not live, now. but my daughter oh, is nice enough to order book. it. It came in just in time for this interview. So walk us through what we're we're seeing here. Look at this. How beautiful. Jeez. That's that's amazing. I couldn't have done this better myself. Look yeah, that. that's two discs for the price of two. What? The instrumental of all the songs, right? Plus Absolutely. The songs. Yeah. And so the songs and book. Book. It's like a book. It's like a it book. Is it's a like book. a storybook. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. You, look at it. Oh my God. And there's pictures. Pictures. Live. And pictures. <laughs> Just came. Oh. Oh music. my Lord. Look at the music. Is that what? the actual music? Yeah. No, it's just Toby if you're, himself. Toby, what'd you do? For, here? In case there's a power shortage, we wanted to put the scores in there so you can you can sing the songs. That's right. That's right. Gorgeous. Because we thought of everything. We're living in strange times. You always have to expect a blackout to happen. Yes. So we we thought, okay, let's put some musical scores in there so at least people, when they're sitting at home, freezing their asses off, they can sing the songs. <laughs> no, that's Good. black humor. I, I'm not, I shouldn't be saying this. Hey, we're from no, Montreal, fine. and the weather's going to start turning here anytime. So you're this great, great thinking. Thank you in advance that we can sing along in those cold winter nights. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Where are you based, by the way? Montreal. Montreal. Oh, that's that's pretty. Uh, that's that's pretty. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Montreal, I remember Canada. that. Show. Yeah. Right before COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was. We were on a wave. Absolutely. And everything was going so well. And uh, at some point, you know, grapes growing into my mouth and I felt like a king. And all of a sudden somebody pulled the plug. <laughs> we were all we we're all sitting here not not knowing if there was going to be a music business in the future. It was a challenging time. And I think this new album helped me a lot to get through this uh, uh, because I, I'm, I, there was nothing else to do with all this time on my hands. Um, you were presented with the time you were being locked in. And I was sitting there in my basement. I had just built my own studio, which was a blessing. It turned out to be a blessing. And I was sitting there not knowing what to do. And um, except from uh, retreating to music and, and, you know, what else can you do except from writing a new album, producing it? I'm a lousy plumber, bad bricklayer. <laughs> you know, it's, 
<laughs> really, I, I couldn't do anything. Well, you know, you were pumping out, Jimmy and I had this discussion on many a show, you were pumping out so much music between Aventasia and Ed Guy in just a short amount of time. And it looks like, well, whatever happened to him? Where's he gone? Because you were, you were releasing almost an album a year at one point. Uh, yeah, it was, but it was really, it was, I have to admit that it was taking its toll. Uh, and when you, uh, the, the real mean thing about it is when you enjoy what you're doing, you don't realize uh, that you're overdoing it while you're at it. You just you just realize that uh, certain things get a little more difficult. I think it was in 2008, February 2008, I had my first hearing loss oh, um, wow. due to stress and stuff like that. But you don't. And that was, you know, I thought like, yeah, but, you know, I'm young. I lost my hearing. It was back after 10 days. No problem. I lost my hearing doing something I love. It would have been way worse if I lost my hearing due to stress doing something I don't love. Uh, or based on doing something I don't love. So I even made fun of it and called the, ne the next Edgar album Tinnitus Sanctus. It was uh, a tinnitus because of, it, was, it, was, it happened because of stress um, doing something that I love. And I didn't really take, I didn't read the signs and I didn't take it seriously. And at some point I was in a treadmill without even realizing it. And I just tried to live up to expectations and whenever I was done with an Edgar record, I wanted to do a new Aventasia record. I had new song ideas. I wanted to do this. I wanted to cherish the project. And I had those ideas. Whenever <clears throat> I was done with an Aventasia tour, I came home and I was two weeks home and the others were like, okay, where's the new Edgar album? Have you written it already? No, just give me, give me six weeks maybe. I, I, I need seven more songs. Um, and it became... It, it was funny in the beginning, but at some point I realized I was burning out. And that's, I think some of those things, now this is a real sad, now this is a real sad interview. I don't want this to be so- Don't be sad. No, we should talk about funny things, but some of those experiences and the trouble of dealing with expectations and being caught in that trap mode, I put into songs like um, Arabesque on this new record and, and Scars. Uh, it's, it's some of that I, I had to get off my chest still within the fantastic fairy tale-ish concept of the album, but uh, I managed to put a lot of myself in there and process some, some thoughts and get things off my chest. So yeah, I was very prolific and um, I, I, I'm happy. Uh, I, I was able to do it, but I think I won't release an album every year in the future. I don't, I don't think so. And I won't do 80, 80 shows a year in the future as well. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to do that anymore. Toby, is, I'm getting is, an old it, fart. It, yeah. <laughs> Toby, is, is Ed Guy done? Is it, is it over now? Or no, no, I don't think so. I mean, certainly we're inactive right now and we're on hiatus and we don't have any plans to go out anytime soon. I mean, that's not just because <laughs> it is the situation in the world. That's not just the only reason. I mean, it makes things difficult, uh, but it's also, we had run out of steam. We, and, and that was normal. We, we like each other and we're still those childhood friends. I mean, we don't have much to do with each other or that much anymore, but um, we're, we're still in touch. Um, the thing is we had developed very different views, everybody of us. And it's not just me and four other people. It was just five opinions on everything. And especially when you're working, uh, when, you're, when you're facing your limits, stress-wise, of course, it's not so easy. If you're in charge of everything, you're writing the songs, you're producing everything, you're, you're putting everything together, you're managing the bands. And to make everybody happy is not always easy. And it's very exhausting. And there's a lot of um, uh, frictional loss, I would call when you have to please everybody in a bad situation. And so it was just time to say, okay, why don't we all do our individual stuff for now and see what happens. And um, but I'm so, taking Felix with me. I'm taking Felix with me. Yeah, but, but, but this little <laughs> cocksucker, I'm gonna take with me. <laughs> You're gonna follow me down the cliff. <laughs> I, 
I, everything's I think, on your shoulders, right? I, so. I think what's happened, at least in my eyes and my perception, is Avantasia, that brand, has outpaced Ed Guy brand in a sense, right? I mean, it, it's it's obvious. Like, this name is much bigger than, than uh, yeah, Ed but Guy. I don't think that's the reason. I mean, of course, I have to feed a family, and Ed Guy certainly couldn't feed a family. Um, Avantasia absolutely can feed a family, but... It's been like that from the beginning. I mean, ever since I started Avantasia, Avantasia was the band that made me become a professional musician in the sense that for the first time in my life, I got money for my music. That was the yeah. first Avantasia album. Before that, I wasn't paid for it. And when I started out with Avantasia and it went through the roof and it went, um, the first album was an instant success. It also dragged Ad Guy along. I mean, Ed Guy made oh, a huge yeah. step upon the release of the first Amtasia record. So Amtasia was bigger right from the start, way bigger. But still, it, it doesn't prevent me from doing what I enjoy and, and going back and uh, doing Hellfire Club and, and Mandrake and all these records, Rocket Ride, Tinnitus, Sanctus, Age of the Joker, Space Police. All these records came together while Amtasia was way bigger. So that's not, I try not to focus. Of course, when you have a family to feed, you have to also make business decisions but that's not that's not the integral that's not the main part of it not at all okay and, and you know what i saw the tennis sanctus tour here in montreal and you promised you'd be back with ed guy so i'm going to hold you to it i'll just be very patient that's all yeah yeah and and i you know i don't necessarily believe in reincarnation so i think there's good hope <laughs> there's good hope it's going to happen in this life in this lifetime, I really, you know, I don't believe Ed Guy is over. It's just right now it's it's hibernating and hibernation. I don't know how long hibernation usually takes for for human beings, but uh, for, for bears is usually about what three four months. Yeah. Three, three years apparently. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, but fortunately we are no bears because if we were bears, you wouldn't come pay ticket to see a show. Yes, exactly. <laughs> bears don't have money. Hey, so let's let's get to the new album. I mean, a You've got your the stable, the Avantasia stable that we've grown accustomed to, Yorn Landy, of course, Bob Catley, Michael, and, and but you also got new guys like Ralph uh, Sheepers and uh, Floyd Jansen. That's a great pickup. I mean, that's a, a great, great songs with her on it. Absolutely. And, and <clears throat> it was really funny because I, I think it all started when I was talking to Sasha about how, how great I think she is for Nightwish and how diverse she sings and, and how versatile she is vocally. And, um, and Sasha said, yeah, of course. And in studio, she's amazing when she's singing in the studio and recording. And he knew because he had worked um, with her for those first um, After Forever records that she had been singing on. It was her band or she was, she was in that band. So um, I said, oh, we should ask her. And I had known her briefly, but I had known her for quite a long time because After Forever had been moving in the same circles, recording in the same studio with the same production team as M. Teja and Ed Guy. So um, she was moving in the same circles. And I got in touch with her and asked if she was ready to be or if she was willing to be part of the new M. Teja record. And she said, yes, to my surprise. That was, that was also because of the pandemic probably because everybody was forced to be at home. She said, okay, I'm gonna do it in my studio. Why not? Great idea. So um, she was, She was. Um, I sent her the song Misplaced Among the Angels and she got back to me and said, oh, it's a good song, but I'm not sure it's exactly the right thing for my voice. It's a, it's a, the range is not, my voice is higher range wise. And I said, oh, that's a bummer. Now uh, she's gonna bail out. And I said, okay, give me a few days. I'm going to write you something else. And, uh, and I wrote Kill the Pain Away. And usually I can't write upon pressure. Usually I don't, I'm not a service provider. I, I can't do that when a record company comes. <laughs> well, I thought you us. were though. I mean, you were cranking up the albums. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, it, it, but, but actually I am not like that. Actually, I'm a very, very lazy guy. I'm very, very, okay. I need to be relaxed to, to write and be creative. But I thought, okay, I have to seize that chance. And it was inspiring to write with her in the back of my head. And I wrote Kill the Pain Away. She listened to it and she said, okay, perfect. Great pop song, 80s epic pop. I'm going to put my spandex on and I'm going <laughs> to sing it. That's what she actually said. 
I'm going to put my 80s spandex on. I'm going to sing it. And a few, few weeks later, she got back to me and she had recorded it in her studio. And she said, by the way, Toby, um, I'm going to send you Misplaced Among the Angels too with my vocals on. Because um, I checked again and I became acquainted with the song and I really like it and it worked to my surprise. So she sent both songs and they're both fabulous. She's an amazing singer, very vertical, very, yeah, am amazing vocalist, technically, emotionally, pitch, power, everything is there. She's very, very good. I, I think Misplaced Among the Angels was actually your vocal performance is outstanding on that one. Maybe you're doing the high parts uh, that you were uh, you were talking about. Uh, no, no, she's she's singing the even higher harmony. I'm thankful. Uh, thank you. I'm I'm I have to say I'm very happy with the vocal performance as well on this record. Um, it's weird. I I don't know. My voice felt so much more. I've I've sung a lot in the past two years in in my studio because <laughs> because there was not so much else to do. I was sometimes just going in and singing Journey songs and and Queen's songs and um just for for the for the sake of it, just because I like singing again which should be it should be normal for a singer but in the past i couldn't even think about whether i like to sing or not i was singing whenever it was required for an album or a show and um but this time with the lockdown and no shows and i was sometimes just sneaking into my studio trying out new equipment valve equipment tube microphones and stuff like that and it was it was i became a bit nerdy but it was great fun and my voice sounds so rested because I haven't done any of those grinding tours under yeah, weird yeah, circumstances sure. in the yeah. past. So, or in the recent past. So, yeah, it was. I'm I'm happy with my voice. Absolutely. You, you kind of answered my next question. It's: Do you write songs with specific people in mind, or do you just send them the songs and and hope that they fit? Like, I mean. I'm listening to uh, Scars, and that that's right in Jeff Tate's wheelhouse. I mean, he's done such a great job on that, and yourself as well. I just want to know, what's the writing process? Do you have people in mind? Um, th there's never a rule without an exception, or there are no rules at all. Most of what I do is based on intuition, and sometimes I write a song like I Tame the Storm, and it turns out to be this modern Iron Maiden ripoff. <laughs> and I think, who's going to be the right singer to cover the fact that it sounds like a maiden ripoff. Oh, let's take you on London. <laughs> he makes every song great. And no, seriously, his song works so well. His voice was so well on that song, but it was very maiden-esque before he sang it and it was not mm -hmm. planned. And he took that song into a completely different direction um, with um, Scars and Jeff's songs in particular. And I would say Michael Kiske is the same case. I usually have their voices in mind when I write something um, because um, are you still with me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, because I, I just got a battery battery information that I'm running low, but it's all oh. fine. I'm gonna okay. no, I'm gonna pl I'm gonna plug it in. If you um, hang up, we know why. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. You get plugged yeah. in. The, the wrong question. <laughs> um, no, we, we, when I have, when I write a song like Scars, I have Jeff in mind and what is weird is that I really, I write that song and while I write it and I have his melody, his voice in my head, I can imagine his voice, I can hear it. I can hear how it sounds when he's singing it or what it sounds like when he's singing it, even though he doesn't even know yet that he's gonna sing on that song, even though we had not been in touch uh, about it. But it's just a matter of imagination. And that's why I think, uh, I think that's why um, well, that's because Jeff's voice is in my DNA. It's, it's, I've grown up with those Queen Strike albums, hey. Rage for Order, and it's in my DNA. And I love his voice so much. And it's been so influential to me that um, I, know, I know exactly what it sounds like. And I can envision the song with his voice on. So, and it's really, it's really the only, I think the only case when I wrote a song with Je for Jeff that was actually not written for Jeff was the first time we worked together, Seduction of Decay, because after I had written that song, I thought at first, so when I was writing that song, to me, it sounded like a version of Black, like a rendition, a heavy metal rendition of Black Dog, 
of Zeppelin. And I envisioned it to be sung by a Robert Plant kind of raspy voice. But then I thought, now nah, that's too obvious. What would it sound like if Jeff would do it? And I immediately switched and I started to sing that song. Hey, in the far cry that it sing in just a wink, we'd come for you. And <laughs> immediately it was, it was in my DNA. And I thought that's a perfect Jeff song. And <laughs> I really love his voice. And I love the guy. He's an absolutely fantastic guy. Great so, person. So we got my favorite, the Scarecrow trilogy. Then you got the Mystery of Time trilogy. Where does this fit in? Is this the start of a new trilogy? Is this the end of another segment of the Aventasia story? Oh, Mystery, of Time was, yeah. Mystery of Time wasn't a trilogy. Mystery of Time was just a... What is a trilogy called if it just consists of two parts? <laughs> trilogy. Trilogy. <laughs> trilogy. It's a, a trilogy. It was a trilogy. <laughs> and this one is pretty much a trilogy, but it could also be a oneology. Uh, oneology? Well, a oneology, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I think the new album is in a way a continuation of the previous album, Moonglow, but both albums don't really need a plot. And this album doesn't even have a plot. Oh. <clears throat> I approached the album like a visit to a magic theater oh. where its protagonists would, uh, the Moonflower Society, its quirky protagonists would drag the listener into a completely um, different dimension or different world. So it's, it deals with escapism. It deals with getting away from expectations and uh, it deals with fantasy. And this concept gave me the, the option uh, to include, to, to write, to paint a nocturne cycle, if you like, to paint 11 individual scenes and pictures that all belong together and speak in the same language but at the same time, it gave me a better, better opportunities to put my own thoughts and feelings in there and put things in between the lines um, that it's, it's really difficult to do that when you're writing, when you're following a plot, because following a plot is you're a service provider. Again, if you follow, if you want people to understand the plot, it's 80% of your lyrics are explanations of why those damn elves are running through that stupid forest mm -hmm. and uh it's that there's not so much room for creative freedom and for poetry and that's why i rather adjusted the art form a bit okay Who, who's on your wish list that you would like to have in the future like bruce dickinson and who else yeah, bruce who, dickinson like? is an open secret but rod smallwood who's a who's a very very nice chap um and, and always very, in a very respectful, he always lets me know that it's not going to happen. <laughs> because, because Bruce, <laughs> yeah, it's, but Who would you like way. to have? Who would you like to way. have? Okay, Bruce Dickinson, that's one. Who else would you like to have in the future? Um, yeah, Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley, per, great singer, um, one of my heroes. Um, I have to say, of course, Lou Graham and, and, and Steve Perry. But I have to say, Avantasia is not to be mistaken for, a, for, for one of those bucket list bands. I think. The, the guest list, um, the, the bells and whistles of the guest mm -hmm. list. I think that should be um, subordinate to the, to the songs and to the performances themselves. And I think the people I work with on this record, six old family members, two new family members, um, I think they helped me to, um, to realize my, my idea and my feelings and, and uh, and I think they give the songs what they need. And that's why I think that's, that should be more important. I don't want this project to become one of those bands where people say, oh, uh, the songs don't really matter, but the new record's got Steven Tyler, the Pope, and Robbie Williams. You know, it's and Bugs Bunny. You gotta get the Pope. And, uh, Dolly Buster. And, what? Gotta get the Pope on. Gotta get the Pope on. <laughs> I, I would, I, actually, I would, I would get, I, I would like to get the Pope on it. I would do it. That would be one exception I would do just for the bells and whistles. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Toby, I, I, I'll be shot if I don't let you know this. My daughter, I've been listening to you since she was nine years old for over 10 years now, and she just wants to let you know that she's, you're one of her idols, and you're the reason why she studies music, and she writes your music, creativity, and genius writing inspires her, and 
He loves you very much, and she. I had to get that in, or else I'll never. She'll never speak to me again. So, shout out to Kayla. She's the, thank probably you. the biggest Avantasia fan in all of Montreal here. <laughs> Th thank you very much. And you know what? I really, it really means something to me because when you inspire other people, that's the biggest compliment you you can you can get from somebody. And it's it's really no. Thank you, really a lot. That's really flattering. Give her my best, and and and. and yeah, and let her know that I really, really appreciate it. And I hope she she becomes a musician and 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 inspires other people. And that's thank you. Thank you. She, she's actually one that can follow the the, the tablatures and the sheet music in here. In case, <laughs> like of, a blackout. Many of, in case of a blackout, we're all good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tobias Amit's Avantasia, the ninth studio album. I'll, I'll show it as I speak. A Paranormal Evening with the Moonflower Society on Nuclear Blast. We should mention that. It was released on October 21st. Get it now while it's Another on. masterpiece. And a pleasure speaking with you. Hope to speak to with you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And we definitely speak in the future. Thank you. I, was, I can was retire pleasant. now. We finally got you on the show. That's I it. We're stopping now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank All you. Right. Thank you for having me.